In this video, we are going to talk about how to tweak your Next.js app to make it faster with the help of Lighthouse. When you visit our website, there's three things you notice almost right away as a user. First is how long it takes for anything in the page to be visible. This includes text and images. Second is how long it takes for a page to be interactive. That is how long it takes for buttons or input elements to work. And finally, how often the layout of the page changes while it's still loading and how disorienting it is. These metrics and many more are referred to as core web vitals. Your app has to meet certain thresholds for these metrics in order for it to be considered as providing great user experience for the users. This is what a generated test report looks like. It scores your app based on performance, accessibility, best practices and more. Let me take you through some of these metrics real quick and what they mean. Measuring how long it takes for elements to be visible can be done in two ways. The first method is fast contentful paint, which measures how long it takes for anything to be visible. The second method is called the largest contentful paint, which measures the time it takes for the largest image or text block within the user's viewport to be visible. This can be an image, a large text block or even a video. To measure how long it takes for a page to be interactive, we can measure the total blocking time which is the time taken between the first contentful paint and time taken for interactivity to work. Finally, we use the cumulative layout shift matrix to measure how often the site changes its layout after loading. For this video, I've set up this Next.js project that lists popular movies from the MovieDB API. Hovering over the movie image cards automatically plays the movie trailers and hovering away poses the trailer. I'll use this app's code base as an example and as we go through it, We'll try to optimize it to be as performant as possible using the lighthouse suggestions as we proceed first of all let's run the lighthouse report for this page as it is now so we can have an idea of where to improve lighthouse is built into chrome so to open it launch the dev tools console and navigate to the lighthouse tab you'll see that there is a generate lighthouse report screen with options for measuring mobile and desktop and categories to measure ranging from performance accessibility best practices and search engine optimization. To start measuring these metrics for mobile, we make sure the mobile option is selected and then click the analyze page load button. It takes about 2 minutes to run all the tests. Once done, it will show the results for all the categories and their scores. We did pretty well in the accessibility, best practices and SEO sections, but our performance score is too low. If we scroll to the performance metrics section, you can see that it takes 9.2 seconds for the largest visible elements to render, which is too long. It also takes almost 30 seconds for the page to be interactive. Overall, the page is very slow and needs a lot of improvements. If we scroll down to the opportunities section, you can see some recommendations on how to improve the performance. We have four tasks on our hands. We need to properly size our images, load the images in a better format, preload the largest image, and also remove any unused JavaScript that we have. If you expand the recommendations, you can see more info on the improvements. For example, if you expand the reduce unused JavaScript section, you can see that there is a YouTube embed script that's impacting performance. Let's go ahead and start making these improvements, starting with properly sizing our images. If you look at the individual movie cards, the image size is 1280 pixels by 1920 pixels, while the size required is 3 or 4 pixels by 171 pixels. It's too big for the space you're loading it in, and you don't even show the whole image. So we're increasing load time and impacting performance for no extra benefit. To fix this in Next.js, we can use the image component. It can crop the images to exact sizes for us. We display the image cards using the movie card component. So we replace the native image tag with the image component. Let's give the image a fixed width of 3 or 4 pixels and a height of 171 pixels. To maintain the look that we initially had, let's give the image an object fit cover style and an object position top style. This is not enough to get this to work. Next.js will throw an error telling us that the domain we are loading the images from is not configured in next.config.js. It only loads images from domain that have been explicitly added. Here's how to add the domain. In next.config.js, we add an images key with the remote patterns property, which is an array. We can then add the config for image.tmdb.org domain where we load our images from. If you look at the poster images now, you'll see that the image sizes are smaller as the exact image size that fits the container is loaded. An added bonus to next image is that the images are lazy loaded. They won't be loaded until they are visible to the user. Also, Next.js serves the images in WebP format, which makes it possible to deliver smaller file sizes than JPEG and PNG images while maintaining the quality. 
Our next task is to remove the unused JavaScript code triggered by the embedded YouTube player that appears on every movie card when you hover over the image. The YouTube trailer preview is loaded in this YouTube trailer component. And as you can see, we display the video in an iframe and we also have a setup script in the use effect hook to get the player instance. This looks like pretty standard stuff at first sight, but there's a huge performance bottleneck that this component introduces. If we comment out this iframe code and then reload the page while the network tab is open, you can see that we make over 100 requests. If we re-enable the iframe code and refresh the page again, you'll see that the number of requests jumped over 1000 requests. That is just crazy. Every iframe has over 50 requests that it makes to load all the resources that it requires. So the more the iframes, the more the requests. We now know that it's very expensive to load the YouTube embed, so we should only load it when necessary. For instance, only when the user sees the movie card. There's a native web API for doing exactly this called Intersection Observer. Let's set it up. First, let's set up a ref called Player L. We then assign this ref to the iframe. We need to move all video logging logic from the iframe to the YouTube Embed API. So we change the iframe element to a div and remove the iframe props. Let's also create an init player function and move all of the YouTube player API logic to inside this function. Inside the use effect hook, let's create an observer variable whose value is a new instance of the intersection observer class. We just want to know if the element you're observing scrolls into view. So we use the dot is intersecting value to check for this. If it's true, we load the embedded player. We also set a threshold of 0.5, which means we'll start loading the player if at least 50% of the element you're observing is visible. We can now observe the player L via observer.observe method. If you reload the page, you can see that a much less number of requests are sent on first load. Scrolling down increases the number of requests as more embed players are loaded. To go a step further, since the user doesn't see the YouTube trailer immediately after the page is loaded, we can use dynamic imports to defer loading the component after all other components have been rendered. We can do so by using the next dynamic module and then using it to load the file with SSR mode set to false. This will make sure Next.js loads the component only in the browser and skip server-side rendering. With that done, let's go back to solving the issue of the number of requests that we have. Currently, we are sending over 81 requests just to fetch the movie data. There is one to fetch the movie list and another 80 to fetch the movie trailers. All this data is static, so there is no need to fetch it every time we load the page. We need to cache it. We can do this by turning this page into a static page. Let's add a get static props async function. We can then move the data fetching code from the use effect hook to this function. We need to also include the movie trailer data with this data. So we loop through each single movie data via promise.all. We can then copy over the code that gets the movie trailers here to here. What we need here is to attach the trailer link ID to the movie if it's there. So we check for it and if there, we update the movie with the trailer link ID property set to the trailer key. We can then return an object to the props key containing the movie's object. If you export this function from the file, Next.js will call it when building the page and pass over the props to a movie's component. We can therefore access the movie's prop from the movie's component directly. We don't need this use effect anymore, so we can just remove it. We can also remove the use effect from the movie card component and access the trailer link ID directly from the movie object as you had said before. Let's also do the same to the full movie component and remove the use effect hook and then update it so that we access the trailer link ID directly from the movie object. With that, we are now fetching all the movie data from one place and all of it is done on the server during build time. It won't affect page load. Let's confirm this by refreshing the home page with the network tab open. No requests are sent to the movie database API. The only requests that are now sent are the ones loading the movie trailers. Okay, let's run Lighthouse on the page again to see if you have made any progress. We more than doubled our performance score from 32 to 66. These are decent score overall but there's still room for improvement. The header image is still impacting the page load time hard because it's part of the largest contentful paint image which is taking 5 seconds to load so we'll need to take a look at it again. It's taking too long to load because of its larger size and it's not being given high priority because of the lazy loading that we added. So let's try to load a smaller header image by giving it a sizes property where we tell the browser and Next.js that the image size should be no larger than the viewport width for viewports 640 pixels and below. We can also give it a higher priority than other images by adding a priority prop to it. Let's also give the first 5 movie cards a higher priority than the rest. We add a priority prop to the movie card component 
and then pass it down to the image component. In the loop that renders the movie cards, we can set the priority to true for the first five items in the movie list, that's the first five images. Rerunning the test again after these changes gives us a much better score of 83. There's always opportunities to make the score a little higher. Like for a score, Lighthouse still suggests loading smaller images, but this should be enough for the introduction. I hope this was helpful to you. Thanks for watching and please subscribe so that you can catch my next video in this series.